Hello everyone, today we're looking at the petrol taps fitted to the early R-series BMW boxers. In particular my 1975 R75-6. This type of petrol tap can be taken apart, service kits are available for them and rebuilding them at home is a simple job. In this video I'll show you how to refurbish these taps, I'll show you where all the internal galleries lead and explain how everything works together. Lots to do, so we best get on with it. We're now looking at the right hand fuel tap of the bike. Now this fuel tap has four positions. The position it's in at the moment is off. That position is also off. If it's pointing down that's on so the petrol will run from the petrol tank to the uh, carburetor and if it's pointing up in the air that's now reserve. Now we have a problem with this valve that when you put it in its off position it leaks fuel. Now it doesn't leak fuel to the outside world but what it does is allow fuel to get through to the float chamber uh, of the carburetor and that's not very good because you want the uh, the float bowl to be empty if you're going to leave the bike for a, uh, a few weeks or a month and you're not going to use it. So I need to get this uh, working again. One of the nice things about the BMW fuel taps is that you can buy little rebuilding kits and uh, it's a set of seals uh, that's used inside so that means that you can rebuild these and get them working again so that's what I intend to do here. Uh, another thing is there should be a, a plastic shroud around here showing the four positions that the tap can go in and I've just bought one. <laughs> the original one disappeared some years ago way back in the distant past and I've been itching to get a new one well I've just bought one it cost next to another about a pound I think anyway I got uh, one of those and that's going to go on as well once I've rebuilt the tap and then once this tap has been rebuilt I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the other tap as well which should give me two good taps. The petrol taps are at the lowest part of the petrol tank. Because of this, as you take the taps apart, any fuel remaining inside the tank will flow out through the tap you're working on. I find the best way to work on the petrol taps is by first lowering the level of the petrol in the tank, then removing the petrol tank from the bike and laying it on its side on the bench. Now, one of the petrol taps will be at the highest part of the tank. You can take it apart with no chance of fuel running out of it. So with that in mind, I've ridden the bike until there's very little petrol left in the tank. That makes it nice and light, so easy to lift off the bike. I've already described how to remove the petrol tank in another video, so I won't repeat myself here. If you'd like to see that video, it was in part one of my BMW Airhead service videos, the link to which will be shown at the end of this video and also in the video description. So, I've removed the petrol tank from the bike and laid it down on its side on the workbench. If you're going to lay your tank on its side, make sure there's not much fuel in it because if it comes above the level of the filler cap, it will come out of the filler cap. So, be warned. Now, I've let, or all I've done is just laid some material on the workbench down here and then carefully laid the tank on top of that material. And now it's time to address the fuel taps. We're looking down onto the face of the right hand fuel tap and what we need to do is unscrew this front disc from uh, the body. Now it's a right hand thread, uh, I haven't got a bifurcated screwdriver that size so I'm going to use a pair of needle nose, bent nosed pliers and uh, it shouldn't be tight so I'm just going to push that into the slots and yes look at that it's turning nicely. Ah, right the thread is out. The thread is quite short on that threaded cap. If you look into this hole you'll be able to see when it has cleared the thread in the body of the tap. My needle nose pliers fit into that hole. I can grab the cap like this, lift, twist and pull it off the handle. Now that front cap has gone you can see the wavy spring washer. This spring washer keeps a preload on the tap internals. I clutch it with the pliers and take it off the handle. Next you have the first of two index rings. This is the outer ring. You can see just here that there's a tab on the outside of the ring and there's also four depressions. We'll talk about these in a moment. 
Now the inner index ring can be removed. Notice this ring has a keyway cut just here and there are four holes. Again, we'll talk about these in a moment. A pull and a wriggle, then out comes a petrol tap handle. Looking into the petrol tap, there's only one thing left to remove. It's that round shiny black thing with the five holes. It's the tap's rubber seal. It's only pushed into the body, so it should come out nice and easily. Right, now everything's apart, let's clean all the bits, then check out how the tap works. We'll look at the handle first. You will notice there's an o-ring seal all around the outside. Pick this out of its groove first. Use a piece of wire wall to clean all the surfaces and the groove the o-ring seal was in. This face needs to be clean and flat to fit nicely against the rubber seal of the tap. I clean it with 600 grit abrasive paper and a little light oil or a squirt of WD-40. The face is looking better now. Make sure it's nice and clean before assembly. These are the two index rings. They produce the four clicks that you hear if you turn the petrol tap around once. The outer ring has a tab just here. That tab engages into this slot of the tap body. It prevents the outer ring turning as the tap handle is turned. The inner index ring has a keyway just here. That keyway fits over this key on the handle. It locks the ring to the handle and ensures that it turns with the handle. So, as the petrol tap handle is turned on the fully assembled tap, the inner ring rotates against the outer ring. Every 90 degrees the four indents on the outer ring fall into the four holes of the inner ring. As this happens it produces the click and also the resistance to hold the handle in one of its four positions. Now, how is the petrol flow controlled within the petrol tap? I will describe the actual workings in more detail in a moment, but in short, this flat surface of the handle is pushed against the flat surface of the rubber seal. The handle has two holes just here. They connect together on the inside as can be seen by the white and black wire. As the handle is turned, the position of these two holes move and control which of the two feeds from the petrol tank will flow petrol to the carburettors. The body of the petrol tap looks like this once everything is removed. These two features are not holes, they are raised bosses and they locate into two of the holes in the rubber seal. They prevent the seal rotating as the tap handle is turned. This hole in the centre of the tap body takes fuel down to the carburettors only. You can see its path by the white and black wire, it connects nowhere else. The hole on the right, just here, roots up to the petrol tank and through this high tube. It carries petrol down to the tap body to supply the normal on position of the tap. The hole on the left also roots up to the petrol tank. It connects to the short pipe and it carries petrol down for the reserve position of the petrol tap. So we're out riding our bike with the petrol tap handle in its normal on position. That's pointing down. The two holes at the back of the handle will be sitting here and here on the rubber seal. As the two holes are connected within the handle, it will allow petrol to flow from the high tube in the petrol tank down to the carburettors. When the petrol level in the tank falls below the top of the high tube, the engine will then run out of petrol. At that point, if you want to continue running the engine, the petrol tap handle must be turned to its reserve position. That's with the handle pointing up. The two holes in the back of the handle will now be sitting here and here on the rubber seal. That will allow petrol to flow from the low pipe in the petrol tank, which is still under the level of the fuel, down to the carburettors. The engine can be run again and hopefully take you to a petrol station before the petrol tank runs dry. One other thing you need to be aware of, the two tubes from the top of the petrol tap that sit inside the petrol tank can be covered with their own fuel filter gauze. So be careful while the fuel tap is apart and don't be tempted to push a wire up from the petrol tap into the petrol tank. If there is a gauze fitted over the pipes you may well damage it. Before we assemble the taps let's look at the indexing rings. My tap had lost its click a long time ago. Now looking at the underside of the outer ring, the one with the dimples, you can see that my dimples have worn almost flat. I wonder if a centre punch could help resurrect the dimples and return the clicks. As the dimples have worn away, the metal thickness of the ring will be quite thin within the dimple. I need an old blunt centre punch and with the ring on the end grain of a piece of wood, lightly tap the punch with a hammer. Well, it seems to have worked. The ring has distorted a little, 
I flatten it with a pair of pliers, keeping them away from the dimples. I don't want to flatten them again. Well, looking at it, I think it may have worked. My dimples now have nipples. The click did come back. It wasn't very loud and it didn't last very long. I think the nipples on the dimples were so thin they either pushed back or they wore away. I want to talk about corrosion within the petrol tap caused by the fuel or what's in the fuel. Consider the petrol tap is in one of its two off positions and the petrol tank is over half full. The two pipes that feed each petrol tap will be under the level of the petrol and therefore full of petrol. As we know, the flow from these two pipes end at these two holes of the seal in the tap body. Right, let's look closely at the flat surface of the handle before it was cleaned. This surface is the thing that butts up against the rubber seal and stops the petrol flowing. You can see corrosion has built up just here and here. These two areas are part of the flat face that closes the two feed holes from the petrol tank. They are against the petrol the whole of the time the petrol tap is in its off position. This image shows the rubber seal from a petrol tap. On the right is a brand new seal. On the left is the one that's just been removed from the old petrol tap. The problem with the corrosion on the flat surface of the handle occurs when you twist the tap handle. The corrosion rubs up against the surface of the rubber seal, scratching it. And you can see it scratches it all around here, and it also rounds the edges of the holes. Compare the surface between the new and the old seals. To my eyes, the old seal looks okay. This hole takes petrol to the carburetors, and these two holes receive the petrol from the petrol tank. The important part of the seal that stops the flow of the petrol is this ring around this hole just here. And that surface looks fine on this seal. Perhaps my problem is with the second petrol tap. We'll be looking at that a little later. I'm going to change both seals anyway as it's a low cost thing to do. Something else you can try is to turn the seal over. This is the back side of that used seal. They're symmetrical, so the unused rear surface may make a good seal. I have tried this in the past, and it worked then. OK, let's get this petrol tap back together. I don't like assembling the seal dry, so I use a thin smear of petroleum jelly on the side of the seal that will go against the flat surface of the handle. Now, push the seal into the petrol tap body with the lubricator side facing you. Make sure the two bosses, here and here, slide into two holes on opposing side of the seal. The handle is next. Smear petroleum jelly on its new o-ring and fit that o-ring in the groove around the outside edge of the handle. A change of lubricant now. The indexing ring and the curly spring are not protected by any seals. Because of this, there's a chance water may penetrate into these parts, especially if a pressure washer is used to clean the bike. To be on the safe side, I use a water-resistant grease on these parts, Castrol CL. I spread a thin layer down there on top of the handle, and on both sides of the inner indexing ring. That's the ring with the four holes and a keyway cut just here. That keyway must fit over this key on the top surface of the handle. It locks the indexing ring to the handle, so the ring will revolve with the handle. Grab the outer index ring next, this is the ring with the four dimples and this tab. Smear CL grease over both sides of the ring and push it over the handle, ensuring the tab locates into this slot in the body of the petrol tab. This tab prevents the outer index ring rotating when the handle is twisted. Take the curly washer next, cover it with a thin layer of CL grease and pop it over the handle and down onto the top of the two index rings. The screwing cap is next. Cover its rear face and thread with the water resistant grease. Slide the cap onto the handle and then screw it down into position. As the cap tightens, it pushes against the curly washer. That curly washer provides a preload for the flat surface of the handle against the seal, keeping it fuel tight. It's also pushing the inner and the outer index rings together and that provides the clicks. Last thing to fit is a plastic cap. I use a little contact adhesive under these. They seem to stick around a lot longer if you do. And with that, the right-hand petrol tap is back together. We'll take a look at the left-hand petrol tap. It's not the original, and it's slightly different in design to the one we've just refurbished. 
I replaced this tap about 10 years ago now. The original tap had been damaged by the metal outer of the choke cable. It was rubbing against the body of the tap and aided by engine vibrations cut a slot into it. That choke cable now has a piece of inner tube rubber wrapped around it. It protects the cable itself and the new petrol tap. This left hand petrol tap still has the plastic cap fitted. The best way I've found to remove in these caps is with a piece of wood. Hold it just here against the tap body and then pull it forward. Click and the plastic cap pops off. This is a petrol tap we've just rebuilt. Note the screwing cap is flush with the top of the body. This is a petrol tap we've just clicked the plastic cap off. As can be seen the screwing cap is different. It's higher and there's no slot to help unscrew it. I tried to unscrew it by hand but even my vice-like grip floundered. This tool I call mole grips. Other names are vice grips or locking pliers. Whatever you call them they will unscrew the threaded cap. Normally I'd wrap a cloth around the thing I was going to be grabbing with these grips, but as luck would have it, the teeth on the pliers fell into every other tooth on the cap. I lightly grip the cap and unscrew it without chewing up the straight knurl. Now that's interesting. There's a compression spring under the threaded cap. And look, the handle came out complete with the threaded cap, compression spring and the two indexing rings. The seal is looking a bit tortured though. That's not a happy looking seal. I think that compression spring is a little on the strong side. It's trying to rotate the seal against its two locking bosses. Let's see if it's been damaged. I pull it out. This is the side that faces the flat surface of the handle. And this is the back of that seal. Well, I can't really see any damage to the face of that seal that would make the tap leak petrol to the carburettors. That, if you remember, was the reason I took the taps apart in the first place. My main suspect is that tortured seal. I think it was a twist of that seal against its locating bosses. It may have opened up a gap, allowing petrol to flow down to the carburettors. It just goes to show that fault finding these petrol taps may not be as straightforward as you first think. I feel fairly confident though that once the new seals are in place, the petrol taps will work just fine. I clean all the parts. The threaded cap. The compression spring the outer indexing ring, this one has good unworn dimples, the inner indexing ring, the seal is a new one. I'm not going to make any adjustments to the compression spring. Although the seal was showing signs of being twisted, it's been there for over 10 years, so it can't be that bad. The new rubber seal goes in first. I wipe petroleum jelly only on the top surface. The back and the sides are kept dry. I'm hoping that this will make it harder for the handle to twist this new seal. More petroleum jelly on the handle and push it into place. That key on the handle must fit into this keyway on the inner indexing plate. First get the seal grease and wipe it over the inner indexing ring and the top of the handle. Push the indexing ring down making sure that the key is in the keyway just there. The outer index ring is next. Wipe it with water resistant grease and then make sure the tab on its side slides into the slot in the tap body, like this. Wipe the grease on the compression spring and push it into place. Wipe more grease on the inside and the thread of the threaded cap and push that onto the handle. Push the cap down with your fingers and screw it into position. I tighten it just a little with the mole grips. Push the plastic cap in place. I've used a couple of spots of contact adhesive under the ring and that should hold it to the tap body. The second petrol tap is now complete. Right, the next thing to do is replace the petrol tank on the bike. There's a bit of a knack to this which I've covered in some detail in part 5 of my BMW Airhead service videos. I'll place a link to that video at the end of this one and it will also be in the video description as well. That should make it nice and easy to find. The petrol tank is now in place. I haven't connected the petrol pipes as I need to make sure the taps no longer leak. I check both petrol taps are in their normal off position. This is when the handle of the tap points towards the rear of the bike. In the tank I pour 5 litres, that's a gallon, of unleaded fuel. I quickly check both petrol taps to make sure there are no leaks. We're okay, both are dry. Now let's check the taps turn on and then off again. 
place a container under the outlet of the petrol tap just here. As there is only a gallon or 5 litres of petrol in the tank, if you turn the petrol tap to its normal on position, the fuel level in the tank may be too low to flow out of the petrol tap. For this reason we turn the petrol tap to its reserve position, that's with the handle pointing up, and now fuel should flow out of the tap into your container. Continue turning the tap to the second off position, that's with the handle of the tap pointing towards the front of the bike. The flow of petrol should now have stopped. OK, petrol taps are working, let's connect the petrol pipes. Now if you remember there is a filter to be fitted, there it is, you've kept that in a, a nice safe place, that goes on to the plastic piece inside the, uh, that fitting, and now you've got to push the, uh, push the petrol pipe down until the filter goes up there, you don't want to scrunch it, and then when that goes up you now screw on the nut, now this is easy to to cross thread, so you've got to be careful here. Now wobble the wobble the pipe and keep the pressure on the on the nut, and you can feel it go up. And then when it goes when it stops moving, you know that there's not that much far further to go. You need two 17 millimeter spanners, one to hold the the tap. There is a a hex at the bottom part of the tap, so you can hold that. And then this goes onto the nut, and we just tighten it up. And there shouldn't be that far to go. And there isn't. There it is. So that is that. Tap secure. With the rebuilt petrol taps connected, it's time for a test ride. It's funny, no matter what job I do on the bike, it could even be something small like a quick wash. The engine seems to run sweeter, and the bike handles better. If you've enjoyed this video, can you please press the thumbs up icon? If you don't, that nasty YouTube algorithm assumes you didn't really like the video, so it won't show it to many more people. This is why creators of videos go on so much about pressing the thumbs up button. It really does help the channel. Also, please make a comment. I read them all, tell me what you liked or you didn't like, and perhaps make a suggestion as to what you'd like covered in a future video. So, could you do something like this? Of course you can. And with that, this video is at an end. Take care everybody, I'll see you next time. Could you do something like this? Of course you can.